Good morning. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I'm your host. Um, it is a beautiful day, even though we had horrible weather last night. Well, not really horrible, but so say horrible weather. It is a beautiful day today and I hope you all are excited. I hope you all are ready to learn. Um, I do have a few new products that I'm going to talk about. But I'm going to switch the format a little bit and I'm going to get into the products. But I want to start off with the meat of the video. Um, last night, there was a post that was put up on um, in my ladies group. And the original post said, I don't, I don't ever let a man know how much money I got. Right? So... I took it and I posted it in the wife group as well. Because keep in mind, I have two different platforms. I have one, just a sex talk group. And then I have one specifically for married people. And when I deal with married people, I deal with them on a certain level. Versus the way I deal with women that are single. So, single women I deal with differently. And I just deal with them differently because... It's a certain level of integrity that's supposed to go along in marriage, okay? All right. So, a person responded, my mama taught me don't ever let your right hand, no, let me see, hold on, let me get it right, because I want to make sure I get it right. My mama told me don't ever let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. I said, okay, because I've heard that too. And that was one of the things that my mama taught me too. But what I had to come to realize is a lot of things that my mom taught me, I ended up later on in my marriage having to reteach myself because some of the things that she taught me work well for a single woman, but it did not necessarily work well in marriage. I believe in being transparent at this point in my life, but I didn't always believe in being transparent. When I'm teaching, I believe in teaching transparency of my life, meaning I use myself as the example. Okay. Um, don't ever let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. To a certain extent, it applies for some things in life. But it does not apply for all things and it's really not good in marriage. And I'm going to explain to you why. When the woman was talking, she was basically talking about finances. And she was talking about, I never let a man know how much money I got. And the woman said, well, my mama told me, don't ever let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Okay, cool. That is being dishonest in your marriage. I'm not talking about single women. I'm not talking about how you operate in your relationship because you have not committed to being one with someone. So married ladies, if you are married, that means you committed to being one. That means your husband, and I'm speaking to ladies, should know everything that is going on when it comes down to your finances. I even seen women say, I have a secret stash. Now, I ain't telling you not to have a stash because every woman should have a stash, but it ain't got to be secret. It ain't never got to be a secret that you got some money on the other side somewhere. I ain't even saying that you got to say how much you got. I'm saying that it should not be an issue for you to have something put to the side, whether it's for a rainy day, for whatever your purpose is, you ain't got to hide that. I even had one, some women saying, well, I just, I looked at the teaching that my mama taught me is wisdom. There is a difference in, and this is what I want to get into this morning. There's a difference in being secretive and there's a difference in doing something in good faith. If I have money set to the side because I need rainy day money just in case something happens, that is being done in good faith. Secrecy is, I'm saying I make $10 an hour 
and I make $20 an hour and I'm taking the difference and I'm putting it up for my own selfish reasons. That's secrecy. And that is completely different. That is dishonest. And this is the thing. We wonder how we get so far off in our marriages to where we can't trust one another, but we want to decide which acts are honest and dishonest. Meaning, you communicating with another woman and you in the inbox and you doing all kind of sneaky things on that level, you as a woman feel like if a man does that to you, it is dishonest. But you hiding resources in your marriage is dishonest as well. And the thing about dishonesty is we can't pick and choose dishonesty. Either it's the truth or it's not. And what I know is a lot of women are going to be upset about this message. When I get to talking about women need wife school, it's because you have to go and unteach yourself all of these things that your parents, mothers, aunties, grandmothers have taught you for a means of survival and not necessarily a means of building a legacy. See, when my mama taught me that, she taught me that from a point of view of survival. I always ask for a little bit more than what you need. Why I can't just ask for what I need? If the light, if, why I can't say, in other words, you got some men that never see a bill. Never see a bill. Meaning, they, they rely on you to have good faith about what the bill actually is. In other words, you have some men that feel like the light bill is for $500 a month. But the light bill is only $175. But he never seen a bill. But he relies on you to be honest about how much the bill actually is. But this is what I want to talk about, though. Because even I have been in this situation where the lie caught up with me. And this is the reason why I'm so adamant about teaching wife school. Because... When the lie catch up with you, it don't feel good. When the lie catch up with you, your spouse look at you in a way that you are not trustworthy. And that is a horrible, horrible place to be in. I have been in that place. I have been there. My husband has really good credit. He takes pride in his credit. His credit has allowed us to be able to do a lot of things that we haven't needed to do without having to go ask nobody for nothing. My husband gave me a substantial amount of money to pay off a debt. Now, I made sure the payment happened every month. That way it wouldn't impact his credit. But he gave me the money to pay the debt off. I did not pay the debt off. I continued to pay the monthly bill on time. And I took the money and I spent it in other ways that I felt was more important. About six months down the line, my husband just randomly decided to pull up his credit report. And he said, Sharonda, didn't I give you the money to pay this off? Why is it still showing up on my credit? It's uh, a, like, why is it still showing up that is that is due? Like that there's a debt there when it's supposed to be paid off. Rather than own my shit at that moment, I was like, well, I don't know. I'm going to have to look into it. He, he didn't worry about it. I didn't worry about it. At this point, I couldn't pay the debt off because I had spent all the money. A little while later, he, he brought it back up again. But what he did was ended up contacting the company for himself and said, my wife paid it off. And they say, no, Mr. Parker, we don't have a payment. He come to me, Sharonda, because he know I'm really good with keeping up with important things. And he knew that if I had paid it off, I was going to have my receipts because that's how I handle business. Where the receipt at, where the check at, contact the bank so we can see what happened with the payment because I gave you the money to pay it off. 
And at that point, I had to let him know that I had not paid it off. And that I had spent the money on A, B, C, and D. He hung up with the people. And he was furious with me. Even though it had impacted his credit in a negative way, it impacted his debt to credit ratio. And it was just dishonest on my part. And one thing I believe in, because I saw, um, I, I see men posting stuff all the time about how women don't own their shit and how women don't apologize for nothing and how women don't um, admit to wrong. I'm a different type of woman. I own my shit. I own it. And at that moment, I had to own it. I had to say that, you know what? I lied. I didn't pay it off. I told another lie. And this is what I did with it. How do you think somebody can trust you when you moving like that? The hurtful part was eventually I paid it off. And at that point, I worked really hard to get the money to go ahead and pay it off because it was supposed to be paid off. But how hard is it do you think it is to rebuild that type of trust where somebody can trust you to do something again, to trust your word, to trust that when you say something, they don't have to go checking up behind you. Secrecy does not help your marriage. And I don't care what your mama told you. I don't care what your grandmother told you. I don't care what any woman told you, young ladies. Secrecy does not help your marriage. I'm stressing marriage. I ain't talking about how single women move. I ain't talking about how single women ask for a little bit more. I ain't talking about how single women have a separate stash on the side. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the women who done committed to being one. It don't help. The best thing that I could have done was say, look, Spencer, you giving me this, but I really think that it could be used in A, B, C, and D, and then let him decide if it should be used in A, B, C, and D, and then tell me no, yes, or uh, for him to tell me, yes, do this with it, or no, go back, go and pay that debt off that I told you to pay off. But what I learned about myself in the reteaching process, where I had to literally teach myself how to be a better wife, teach myself certain things because I felt like because I wasn't being unfaithful, I felt like because, you know, um, I wasn't doing, uh, you know, I ain't no drug addict. I felt like because I ain't gambling our money away. I felt like because I wasn't doing certain things that I was still a good wife. It may be good in some ways, but not so good in others. And the thing about wife school is, it, it, it points out those areas where you need to straighten up. And this was an area where I needed to straighten up. What I learned about myself was I did not want to be challenged. I did not want to be told no on no level, which means that I did not want to allow my husband to be the head. And I wanted to do what I wanted to do. That's all it meant. It's just that I wanted to maintain a certain level of control in the marriage instead of following his lead. We wonder how we get off track. We wonder how things start getting so bad. We wonder how trust gets broken. We wonder how all of a sudden, because you did this, it gives him the leverage to say, well, I could do that. How we want these men to walk in this certain level of perfection when we don't do it? How do we want these men to walk in a certain level of honesty when we won't do it? See, I don't, I don't get a lot of feedback on these videos. And it ain't about no likes and shares and all of this kind of stuff. Because I have to do what thus said the Lord. I told you, he told me marriages will be restored in 2021. And the thing is, he didn't tell me that the message was going to be all happy, go lucky and pretty. But he told me I got to do the work. And this is a part of doing the work. A part of doing the work is 
sometimes calling us out on our bullshit as women. I even had a woman to tell me what the Bible say. You ain't supposed to let your uh, you ain't supposed to let your left hand know what your right hand doing. The Bible say that. I told her I say pull that scripture for me. Pull it. Because one thing about it, I ain't gonna ever say I know everything. But what I will do is I will research. So she sent me the scripture, and I, I read the scripture. I went and I got my, um, I have like a lot of notes. I got a Concordia and I got all kind of stuff. And I have somebody that I can, a minister that I can literally, one call that's all. Shout out to Minister Maya Anderson. <laughs> so last night, like around 11 o'clock, I was like in her inbox and was like, hey, I want to make sure I'm teaching this right. Because the thing is, when God puts something in your hand, meaning his people, even if you got to go reass give reassurance, you ain't got to ever have too much pride to where you can't go to somebody who is a little more seasoned than you and say, hey, before I do this live tomorrow, I want to make sure. And I said, she gave me Matthew, Matthew 6, 1 through 4. And it basically says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your father in heaven. So this scripture is basically talking about giving to the needy. It's talking about when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. As the hypocrites do it in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. In, in other words, God ain't got to reward you because you didn't already got your reward in, in full from the people. They didn't praise you and worship you for giving to the needy. So, in other words, you didn't basically remove God from having to do the blessing because you got your blessing from people. So what he said was, what Matthew said was, but when you do give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be done in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So the thing is, when you give it to the needy, you can do it in secret because God is the rewarder. In other words, if somebody tell it, it won't be you telling it. Now, if the needy person say, well, such and such reached out to me and did this, this, that, the other for me, that's different. But it ain't you going around saying that this is what you did for people. This ain't you showing what you did for people. For likes, for... um for praise, for validation, for whatever. So I had to go back to the woman and say, sweetheart, the scripture that you're talking about, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. It is strictly about giving to the needy. It has nothing to do with being secretive in your marriage or your relationship. It is strictly about giving to the needy. Nothing. I have never seen anywhere in the Bible where God encourages us being secretive with our spouses. He never in the scripture told us we're doing it for wisdom. So on my Instagram, there was some women that was like, oh no, I back this. I back that you need to have a secret stash. I back that you need to, um, I gotta see what that text is. I back that you need to have your own money to the side and a man don't need to know everything that you got because when mad day come around, you gonna need a rainy day fund. When, when the shit goes sour and you got to be able to move, you're going to have to have resources to be able to move because when y'all ain't together no more, he ain't going to want to give you no money to help with the children and this, 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 that, the other. But let me just tell you something. You can still have that money for whatever you need it for, but it ain't got to be done in secrecy. It can be done in a way to say, you know what? I'm putting this to the side because when a rainy day come, we got to be able to handle it. Now, it does not specify what the rainy day is. The rainy day means you may have to separate. The rainy day is you may have to make car repairs. The rainy day is you may have to deal with COVID, like a lot of us having to deal with COVID. But the thing is, the money is there. The resources is there. And he can know that it's there, but it does not mean that he has to have access to it. Some other women say, well, you got to put the money to the side because some men ain't good with managing money. 
He cannot be good with managing money, but he can still know that you put money to the side for the family that he don't need no access to because you the person that's a better saver than him. It's about communication. I ain't never got to hide nothing because I can communicate with you that, sweetheart, and I mean, you both know that you got a little problem. Sweetheart, me and you know that you ain't the best with money, so we got to have us to the side just in case something happens because ain't nobody got us. See, a lot of parents was giving you this wisdom because, well, this old wives' tale, I don't necessarily want to say wisdom, but they were teaching you these old wives' tales because of the kind of man that they had. Because your daddy was a drunk. Because your daddy was on crack. Because your daddy would take the money and go trick it off with other women. Because your daddy did all of these different things and she had to move accordingly. But that ain't your life. I keep telling y'all that. That ain't the man you got. The man that you got is trustworthy and honest and love his family and put y'all first. So why are you doing the things that your mother was doing? You, you basically setting your marriage up as if your husband your, was your daddy. And was doing the things that your daddy did. Or was doing the things that the men that your mama picked did. But if you ain't got them kind of men, why are you moving like that? Okay. If you are interested in reteaching yourself and learning how to move in a different way so that your marriage can have longevity, legacy, register for wife school. I, I'm always tickled when women be like, oh, they people need classes for that? Yeah, people need classes for that because a lot of y'all don't know. A lot of us didn't know because we ain't been taught nothing but survival. We ain't been taught how to build for a legacy. We ain't never seen that before. A lot of us. But when I get to saying, you know, when y'all, oh, baby, my inbox gets it. But when I get to throwing it, baby, you need to register for wife school. Biden have made it possible. You ain't know you was getting them five, six thousand dollars with all them churn. You ain't know that. But yet, you won't invest in yourself, but you'll invest in a wig. You won't invest in your marriage, but you'll invest on a trip. You won't invest in your marriage, but you'll invest in A, B, C, and D. And you got A, B, C, and D, and your shit still ain't together. Well, that's enough on that. Y'all know how to go on the website and register. The website is below. Okay. That's for my YouTubers. The website is below. Let's move on. The golden egg is in stock. Y'all know we get the golden egg. My ears are always itching. We get the golden egg every year for the spring, for Easter. So the golden egg is a really, really cute bullet that is shaped like a golden egg. We get them every year. They are $15 here at the PPG store. Mm -hmm. And they're on the website as well. We have a new sex position book that came out. 365 Sex Move uh, Positions for Having Sex. A New Way Every Day. Um, and this one is actually written by Randy Fox, who is also the author of the Position Sex Bible. Um, so... This one actually have the pictures. I have closed it up because I don't want to get flagged. But this one actually got the pictures in it. All right. And lastly, we have our Mother's Day basket. $100. $100. It has, I'm going to flip it to the back so you can see, a whole rabbit vibrating kit in it. It also has Benoit balls. It has cock ring and anal beads in that kit as well. It does come with the golden egg bullet. It comes with sex dice, the ones that have you all over your house. And it also comes with uh, lubricant, sex games, the purple crotchless panties, the lace ones, um, all types of things for massage and relaxation, bath bombs, and so forth and so on. So, so on and so forth, rather. But, yes, it's $100 here at the store. 
Um, for those of y'all that got young mamas, when I'm saying young mamas, meaning your mamas between the ages of 40 and 60, y'all go ahead and get together and get mama a basket. Go ahead, put together and get Auntie a basket. Put get put together and get the matriarch of your family a basket. Who is the matriarch? The matriarch is the one that's, that's the glue to the family that is holding all of this shit together. Who, when y'all get the cutting up, she got to come through and straighten it out and let y'all know to act like y'all got some damn sense and get it together. That's who the matriarch is. A lot of y'all don't, some y'all don't have a matriarch. Well, guess what? If you don't have a matriarch, then you need to start grooming yourself to be, to be the matriarch of the family. Because every family needs the glue. That is the person that is holding it all together. Making sure that the holidays happen. Making sure that everybody coming together. Making sure that the cousins know who the cousins is. That's who the matriarch is. Okay? You all be blessed. You all be safe. Um... Wife school uh, registration is coming to, uh, it's, it, the deadline is coming up. It has to be, you have to be registered and paid in full by April the 1st. Um, your workbooks will be mailed out to you like around April 2nd, April 3rd. Well, no, 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 because that's the Easter holiday. So right after Easter, which will be April the 5th, I want to say, that's when your workbooks will be mailed out. That way you can get them in time. You will also get a welcoming email from me with some, with a syllabus in so many words, with some prep work, some, some different things that you're going to have to do to reflect. That way, when we start class, you already ready to roll, meaning that you will have homework due before the first day of class because we ain't got time to get ready. We got to be ready day one of class because we don't have a lot of time we only got three weeks to do wife school so if you feel like you want to invest in yourself and your marriage in on this type of level you need to go ahead and get to it um some people ask me am i selling the workbooks no ma'am not selling the workbooks the people that i'm dealing with i'm dealing with them hands-on i'm dealing with them Meaning that I'm going to be able to answer your questions. I'm going to be able to respond to your emails. I'm going to be able to work with you to get you to where you need to get to on track. You won't get the workbook and then feel like, oh, I'm going to do it myself and still fuck it all up in the process because you don't want to be corrected. See, a lot of people don't want to come to the class because they don't really want to be corrected and they want to pick and choose what they want to uh, master in wife school. That ain't the way it go. See, when you sit in my classroom, because you done paid to be there, I know you're going to want to learn. People, when, when people pay for a class, they come in that motherfucker with their antennas up, ready to receive it. It's a different type of teaching than what happens for free on this platform. See, this is the free stuff here. So if you're getting all this good stuff for the free stuff, you can imagine what happens when you pay for the class. It's on a whole nother level. See, that's just like you going to YouTube and you like this, this, that, the other. But it's a difference when somebody, I'm going to use Amber for an example and I'm going to be through with it. Amber works for me at the store. Janetta works for me at the store. Both of them are wives. Both of them watch how I move. They, they pay attention to how I move. Meaning I, I get a lot of opportunities to be hands on with them. For Steak and Blowjob Day, I don't know if y'all saw Amber's presentation, but I was in Houston, and I said, God damn. And even John Yetta, too. Both of them actually had the same type of steaks for their um, husbands, the um, the the tomahawk steak, tomahawk, the, the big old steak with the handle on it, the big one. Both of them had really nice presentations, but let me tell you something. Amber presentation was... You knew effort was put into it. You knew she had took time. She had thought about it. Because one thing that I teach is doing things with the spirit of excellence. It's important that you do things. When you're doing things for other people, you do it with the spirit of excellence. Anything that God puts in your hand, you do it with the spirit of excellence. 
And I told her when I got back, I said, Amber, let me tell you something. You did that. That presentation was amazing. It was awesome. And she said, Miss, Miss Parker, he was uh, asking, well, Amber, what you doing? Amber, why are you doing all that? And she said, because Miss Parker taught me that when I do things, I do it in excellence and I do it in love. Those are the type of wives that I'm teaching. I'm teaching women that want to have that type of attitude when it comes down to their marriage and their spouse. If that ain't what you're trying to do, then you don't even need to register. Because the, the level that I'm teaching, it's going to go way over your head. It's going to go way over your head. Okay? All right. Be blessed. Be safe. The website is below. If you want to go register, if you need to pay off your balance, the link is on the website as well to pay off your balance. If you want to make a partial payment, the link is on the website to make a partial payment. But you only can make a partial payment towards wife school if you have already put, if you've already did your initial deposit. So that means you can't make a partial payment if you haven't even registered. You have to register and at that point you can make partial payments up until you mail uh, up until you pay it off once you pay it off then your workbook and all your materials will be mailed to you it will not be mailed to you if you have a balance all right that is that on that 